Hello everyone, welcome back. Um, in this video, we will be working on on the special challenge or an interesting challenge, um, which is Reckovac. So basically, um, today's topic is about um, embarking or decrypting code on runtime, which means that we will we do not have access to the code directly because the code is going to be unpacked or decrypted on real line. So let's not waste too much time and just open up the challenge. So as always, before you try to watch me try to solve it or explain it for you, just go on and try it on your on your own. Try to solve the challenge on your own, then came back here so that you can learn something new. Um, so what do we have? So overview. So log ID all developers have implemented military grade on device encryption to keep the password secure. So this log is not attached to any hardware security module. Okay, and the details is the same as any other challenge. So okay, so what do we have? Let's try to run um, this code. So what is the password? So the password is going to be, just say for example, item wide one two three four. So um, it's um, let me see. So I think we have the program just stopped. Um, okay, um, that's cool. Let me just get my music on. Um, yes, so basically this is what we have. Mm, so let's just do some static analysis on the challenge, just to see what we can, we can have. Uh, okay. So, um, the first thing to do, as always guys, is to find the main, try to find the main. So what we have, so this is the main function. So it's moving um, some address into the register 40, and then he's moving something from register 14 into register 15. Um, then he is moving 0x f8 into the register 14 again. So that means that he saved some address at the register 15, I think. And then he moves again some other value into the register 15. 14, then he's moving some address, which is a typical address that we have so in a lot of challenges, which is 2400, okay? He's moving that into register 15, then he's calling the encryption, encrypt function, or ENC, and he's calling that code, which means, then he's clearing the register 15, that, which means that he's gonna be doing something to this, um, with this address, which means that if this address is pointing to sim bytes, then he's going to be doing something, and then he's going to be calling that the result of that function, and then he's going to be clearing register 15. Now the thing is that if we take a look at the encryption function, we see that he's doing a lot of stuff, and one thing about this, we can reverse engineer back that statically. We can just go in and try to to try to just figure out what this encryption function is doing but another interesting thing is that we can just do it dynamically we can just set a breakpoint at this line and check what's going to be happening exactly so if we do that um, so before we um, before we run the program if we reset uh, we see and um, if we just try to for example set a breakpoint as a call before the encryption and after the encryption, if we try to continue, so we hit the breakpoint, and if we check the address 2400, we see that we have all those bytes in here. Now here's the thing. So basically, those are the bytes that will be passed to the encryption function. Now the thing is that after calling the function, let's see if those bytes are going to be changed or not. So as you can see, the bytes have changed. And we see a lot of code, a lot of new code is um, just got unpacked or decrypted inside of the memory. 
Now the thing is, if we try to continue, um, just if you notice it something, when we uh, when we try to run the program, we see that there was a message um, that said to us what is the password, and we gave that password. But obviously, if we take a look at the code, there is no, for example, if I want to search for password, password is not available inside of the code. Uh, even that string is not available, which means that the code responsible for reading um, the password and outputting that message for us is not um, is not hard-coded inside of the code which means this is the kind of security that was implemented he is basically unpacking or decoding or decrypting the code at runtime so basically this is what this code is doing and um, we can check that for example now after we do the call we obviously should have a valid code or otherwise the code won't run and we, could, we should exist obviously um, so if we step so we have push register 11 this is basically what we have so this is the instruction that's going to be um, that's going to be executed which is this one just starting from the other 2400 and if we step back see now push register 4 move sp move the stack pointer to the resistor 4 again um, add 4 to the resistor 4 add 0x ff e0 to the stack pointer and so on so one way to do that we can just disassemble that directly we can just take a snapshot or copy all this data and try to decrypt it just to understand what this code is doing exactly I think this is a better way to do it just um, just better than trying to do that just using step and keeping on stepping just to see the instructions we can just disassemble them directly so to, before we disassemble them we need to clean up a little the um, the code um, so if we try to do that um, that should be cool uh, clean that Um, let me just add a point in here. Um, this call. Okay, let's take a bite of that. Do we have something else? Uh, yeah, so now it should be cool. I have all of them. We try to get rid of that. Uh, I had a problem with this. Second, you have other problems? Nope. Okay. And yes, we have cleared all of them. We don't get have to get out of that. I'll try to disassemble that now. If we disassemble that, we get the full instructions that we want. But obviously. Um, it is a function so since it is a function it is supposed to be since he's calling some kind of function that is obviously unpacked or decrypted um, at runtime um, it should obviously have a return at the end of it so if we try to see what is the return exactly in here um, so this is basically the first return so this is basically the function that we want and the other stuff is basically some random some random maybe other code that it's gonna be executed or something but basically it's not I'm pretty sure it's not um, it's not contained into this function yes so if we try now to reverse engineer back this function to understand what it's doing so it's basically pushing it's pushing the resistor 11 and resistor 4 as a way to save them because it's going to be pooping them at the end um, then he is going to be moving the stack pointer into the resistor 4 then adding um, 4 to the resistor 4 then adding a negative value to the stack pointer just to get into some value then he's going to be moving um, something inside the resistor 11 which is this address so if we go and check this address in memory which is um, 4520 let's check this address to see what's 
what's inside of that address so 20 so 45 45 20 45 20 so this is the address so this is what this address is pointing to so it's pointing to what's the password so obviously this is just a simple way to just get the address of that um, of that string so yes then he's gonna be jumping to the actual address plus 16 bytes which means that he's gonna be um, he's gonna be jumping to this one so if we try to um, if we try to do that so this is a four this is a four um, this is an eight so this is an eight so obviously he's gonna be doing this it's gonna be calling this one so yes so before he do that he obviously incremented the resistor 11 and then he's gonna be doing some sign extension just checking the seventh bit if it is a one then he's gonna be completing the other um, eight bits or higher bits with ones um, which means that's, get, that's gonna be changed into some apps and I have uh, I have basically tried to explain this instruction in the previous video if you have watched it the stack buffer overflow video um, then he's gonna be pushing the resistor 15 which means that he's gonna be um, um, he's gonna be pushing that address then then he's gonna be calling 0x0 so 0x0 stands for the output so basically this is for the output which means that we are gonna be outputting something then he's gonna be calling 2464 which is basically I suppose the interrupt function or something like that um, let me check that out Okay, 24, 64, 24, 64, this is a 0, this is a 1, this is a 2, this is a 3, this is a 4, this is a, this is a 4, yeah, which is uh, 41, 1E, is it the interrupt? Um, Nope. So basically, he's going to be calling something. Anyway, so this is basically um, the code that is responsible for the output. Anyway, um, then he's going to be adding four to the stack pointer. Then he's going to be moving one byte from that um, one byte from that uh, from that string into the register um, 15. Then he's going to be testing if that byte is zero. If it's not, then we keep looping. So it's basically this block is just for uh, printing the what's the password string so it's obviously just a simple way to do it now uh, once he do that he obviously so this is basically he pushes the 0xa which stands for the end of line uh, character then he's gonna be again output uh, which means that we're gonna be calling some output function to the screen and then we call it um, what else so we add again for to the stack pointer we push one F and then we um, move that negative value into the resistor 15 then we add 4 to the resistor 15 then we push the resistor 15 so this is basically just for testing the input which means that the password or our password obviously so this is basically just um, address so resistor 15 is going to be having the address of the password and the this is basically the size the size of the password we can pass on once we do that we obviously push the address of the password where we're gonna be saving it and then we're gonna be telling him reading something this is basically the number for reading something which is two. so to output something you can use the one to read something from the keyboard you can just use two so once we do that he's gonna be adding six to the stack pointer then he's gonna be comparing um, the value that it was pointed to by the resistor for minus zero x4 which means comparing you're basically comparing um, zero x 
with um, resistor 4 minus 0 x 24 um, and if it has that value then everything is cool otherwise um, so we jump if not if it's not 0 to this address which is this one otherwise we push 0 x 7 f which is going to be unlocking door obviously and we just call it so we need to make sure that this value at this address is, is 0x24 now here's the thing this is a simple way to do this we don't have to go in, uh, we to go on and check for example where this offset is exactly because we knew and we are pretty sure that the password is going to be at the stack pointer at the top of the stack obviously because we're going to be reading it and we want to make sure that the value at this address is just simply 0x70f we can just for example send just uh, just a simple way to do this we can just let's just before do before we do that check for example how much data is this 0x1f if we do that we have 0x1f which is 31 if we divide it by two so we're going to be sending them in hex and hex the decimal format so it's 15 if we divide it by 2 so if we add a plus 1 so we have 16 so if we set for example just a bunch of bytes that has 70 AF repeated for example just this way we can do it this way AF and we send them 17 times or 16 times we basically should be able to make sure that one of the few values that are in here are going to be at this offset we are pretty sure because this register 4 is obviously pointing to to the stack pointer and we have we have seen that at the beginning because we moved what's in the stack pointer into the register 4 and then we added 4 to the, the register 4 and then we have used that a lot so obviously to make sure that this value at this offset is 0x 17 AF is in something like pretty hard to do you can just simply send that value to the lock and see what's going to be happening um, uh, we can just take we can just get right of those breakpoints we don't need them anymore if we reset if I check that one, if we continue, yes, the door is unlocked. So there's pretty way. It's a pretty uh, straightforward way to solve the challenge without too much, to, like that too much um, effort. But yeah, so obviously what we have learned out of this challenge is that sometimes programs are unpacking themselves at runtime, and you need to disassemble them. Basically, I have used the decompiler. I have, I have used basically the disassembler. I'm sorry. I have used the, dis, the disassembler of the micro corruption. It did, it did the job for us. But for example, if you are playing on a CDF phone and, or an official one, sometimes the assembler is not known, and you have to run your to write your own disassembler. So yes, I hope you have learned something new. Don't forget to follow me on Discord. Um, join the Discord I mean that follow don't forget to follow me on Twitter too and yes um, basically we are, we are we are in a journey guys to complete the micro corruption so don't forget to activate the bell notification and YouTube too yes see ya ciao bye